Oh, there guys, this is Height Advantage, we're in our cr my creative world here, and we're going to be doing a bit of a tutorial on water elevators. Now when you think of those, you may get two designs in mind, which is this one here, which has signs holding up the water for each level, and um, wood blocks or whatever type of blocks you want to use, um, holding the water all in place. Um, the other type you can do is using fence gates so that it's completely suspended, you can move in and out of them and into them at any point. But of course these are both quite, quite difficult to build, this one costs a lot of blocks and that's a bit of a mess up there, just ignore that. And this one is also, it costs a bit of blocks and it's quite difficult to build, mainly because you can't place fence gates on the sides of blocks here, they have to have a block underneath for you to place them. So yeah, these these designs, they're probably good for undergrounds maybe, probably this one. But otherwise they're not they're not too practical for outdoor use. So what I have in mind um, for an idea is to use these kinds of water elevators. Which use ice blocks, which when melted, um, just leave the source blocks floating in the air, if you have them suspended of course. And you can come up with some pretty cool designs. Um, with water elevators. And of course they're very practical and they're completely open to the air so you don't need any supporting blocks, it doesn't cost you any blocks apart from if you want to have a base which I highly recommend and I'll let you know about that later. Um, but yeah, so we got four designs and I'll just introduce the, you to them. There is one of them that doesn't work though. Let's see if you can guess which one of these works. We got this one here, 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 and here. There's just the ice versions of these two. Okay, so this one here it is the simplest and it takes up the least room, pretty simple design. Um, it has gaps in between, so let's say you wanted to put in multiple layers or different layers for this. What you can do is because there's a gap there, you won't update the water when you place a layer or a floor around here. Just pretend this is like a layer in a house or whatever you're building out in the, out in the open. So you can just have a layer around here, and it's not going to interfere and update this block here. And if you wanted to, you can change up the style of the block, have grass there instead. It's completely up to you, and you can have multiple layers at each point along here, wherever you want. So that's quite two, quite a significant um, pros of this this type of elevator here. Um, and yeah, of course, they all cost pretty much no blocks apart from the base. Um, the next style over here is basically just two of these together at angles. Of course you can't have them um, at the horizontal to each other because when ice melts it will still update the blocks around it even though it's just leaving a floating source block here. I'll just quickly demonstrate that for you guys. So if you have two of them and you light them both up, one of them is going to melt and then the other one's going to take a bit longer and it's going to update the other one. So once this one melts, it's going to update that one and then it's going to update the other one back. It's just going to make a big mess here. See? Yeah. So you, you can't have them right next to each other. You have to have them by their own with no blocks um, next to them, at least ones that you're not going to move. You can have some blocks next to them, but you can't ever break them, otherwise it's going to destroy your whole elevator. Okay, and back to this one. So the pros of this one is um, it's a bit easier to use. And this one you can sometimes accidentally fall out. If you're going up it and on the side and you're trying to make it quick and you just fall down. Take a bit of damage, so that's no good. So this one is a bit, bit easier, it's a bit harder to fall out of. You can still fall down in the corners here, but it's a bit safer. Of course this one takes a bit longer to build and also takes up a bit more room. It's a 2x2. Two but maybe if you wanted if you wanted a building that was an even number of blocks on the side and you wanted to make everything perfectly symmetrical, you could use this type. Or the one behind it, but we'll get to that soon. Um, so yeah, it's just a different option for th this type of um, elevator. And of course this one also has spaces in between, so you can have drop-offs anywhere you like. And yeah, it's up to you. Now, this one, the last one we have in Water States, just because it's all lined up. This one I've called the spiral and this one doesn't work at all. I tried this out just setting everything up and just thought of it just then 
and you'd think you could line yourself up like this, and you'd be able to be inside all of the water blocks at the same time, and just go straight up. But unfortunately, even though these water blocks are just source blocks floating in the air, they still flow to each other. So this water block is flowing down to this one here, and they're all flowing down to the one below it. So you have to really work to get up. So if I try to go in the middle here and just hold it held up, it just pushes you around and pushes you back down. So that doesn't work at all, unfortunately. So you can't use this design unless you want to get down in a very strange and unnecessary way. So yeah, that's this design. Don't use it. It's not good. And onto, that's the ice version where just the scaffolding for it. So you just melt this and it turns into this. And same for these two. Now this is the more complex one. It takes a bit longer to build because you have to have ice for each level. Especially if you're doing this in survival, where you're making, you have the ice silk touched, or you can build this inside a snow biome, it's up to you. Of course it is a lot easier to do it in a snow biome because you don't need any resources to do it really, just like buckets and that's it. Okay, so I call this one the mesh just because it's very dense, and yeah, it's hard to fall out of. And the property of this, I'll just start melting it now because I don't have a water version of it. So this is how I go about melting mine. You may not want to use um, glowstone blocks if you're in survival. You can just use torches, but I'll show you a demonstration for using the torches correctly because you can't get a bit mixed up with those. So I'm just melting it here. I'm not sure exactly the best way to melt it, but you have to make sure there is at least an air block in between them because otherwise when I get rid of all this glowstone, if it was next to it right here, and I broke it, this would just all get destroyed because it would start flowing down all the layers and they'd all get messed up. So you definitely want to make sure there's air blocks in between to stop the update, otherwise all your work's going to be gone to waste. So yeah, this one's quite difficult to build, it's quite yeah, intricate and it's going to take you a while to do, but it is it does have some pros. Um, but we'll keep going with the cons. Um, this one, yeah. The problem with it is if you want to have layers on it, you have to do it before you melt it. So I could have a layer around here and just build a few blocks off the side here. But once it's all melted, if I break those blocks I built on the side, then it's going to update everything. So I can have layers, but I have to build them before I melt the structure, otherwise it's going to be all ruins. What you can do is have um, floors that are out to the side, so maybe you just wanted to... Stop flying. <laughs> maybe you wanted to like jump out of it, you could. Even though it's quite difficult to get out of these, you could just have a gap in between. But if you wanted to have floors like right next to it, you just can't do it. Well, you can do it for some blocks, but you can't do it all the way around like you can with um, this elevator here. Okay, so this is just about melting, and you, and you get the idea with this. Um, I'll just show you once it's completely melted, it's getting there, that when you're actually swimming up it, because it's all symmetrical and it's all, um, yeah, all quite dense, it's got each one for each layer, it is actually quite difficult to get out of this water elevator, because the water is all pushing towards the center. So it's a lot harder to fall out of and makes it a bit safer for going up it. It does make it a little bit more difficult to get out of it at a certain level, but I don't know, it just depends if that bothers you or not, really. So it's it's anybody's preference. So yeah, that's pretty much the features for it. Um, I'd say if you're quite advanced with doing this and you really know what you're doing, you can use this method. Um, also, if you wanted to use it to transport mobs quite a lot, like trying to get farm animals up in the sky or something like that, you can use this method as well, because it's only there's no only one space of air blocks in between, and they can all short mobs can swim up it properly, because if you get them in the center, they'll just go straight up, and they pull pull towards the center as well, so they won't fall out too easily. Uh, getting them out of it's a bit more difficult, but um, yeah, <laughs> it, it's up to you. I haven't tried anything with it, maybe I will in a later video, 
but for now, yeah, I'm not going to try and mess with this too much. Okay, so yeah, you get the general idea with this, there's still a few blocks to be melted, but um, yeah, on to the next little bits of things. What you're going to need to do with these structures is you can see each one of these has a little base at the bottom here. I think I mentioned that earlier, but um, yeah, you want these to be at least off the grounds a bit, or you want them to be protected in some way using drain holes. I wouldn't recommend these because they're a bit annoying, you can fall into them and you have to jump out and it's just not flat, it doesn't look very good. But if you do go about this route, it, is, it does protect your um, water from getting updated. So I'll just show you an example here with these ones. Because this is completely unprotected, it's going to be completely flat ground. So when I put a water bucket down here, it's going to update that and make it just an absolute mess everywhere. So you want these up the ground, so if you accidentally misplace a water bucket, it's not going to ruin everything. And grab this other guy. There we go. Okay, so you can have drain holes, but I recommend just um, suspending them, because that'll make your life a lot easier, and it looks kind of cool, I think, in my opinion. And also when you're doing these, uh, you do have the option, you can either, for this type exactly, um, you can choose to have the water blocks at eye level, or you can choose them to have one above. Um, generally you want them to be above you because the whole, the good property that water elevators have above um, ladders or something, is you can simply jump into them, and you get the momentum of, of, of your jump going through it as you go up. So it kind of is a bit faster to start off with. So that's um, a good property of that. So if you want to, you can get rid of these two at the bottom here. And just have this to jump up into. But it may be a bit more difficult to get into it to start off with. Because if you just jump off the side here, it's not going to catch you. But yeah, again, it's completely up to you. So there's plenty of options with all these designs and everything like that. Now if you want to go about doing this in survival, of course if you have silk touch ice blocks, this is all pretty easy, you can just do it exactly how I've done and just start building it straight away. But if you're in a snow biome and you want to get this done without any intense resource gathering or anything like that, what you're going to need to do is build scaffolding for water blocks, like so, so you can have it two off the ground to start off with, it's probably the best, best method and you just put the water inside a scaffolding so it doesn't flow anywhere because that can just be annoying and you have to wait for this one to freeze so just pretend we're in a snow biome for the moment and it freezes and then you have to do the next layer after that and this is just for the single file one so you have to go about doing this putting the water in, waiting and it will freeze and then you have to get rid of all these blocks here to have the ice just floating there and then you can go about lighting it up and using it properly but again use the bases it'll save you a lot of time um, one final thing though is when lighting these guys up you want to make sure that if you're using torches to save on resources and don't use up like glowstone or lamps or anything like that or pumpkins you could maybe use pumpkins because they're pretty cheap um, but anyway, if you're going to use torches, it can be a bit deceiving, because this torch is occupying this whole block. So, let's say I have a torch right next to this. It may not look like um, it's right next to it, but it occupies the whole block, so it's going to update this water block if it's placed there. So, if this was ice, let's say, we'll make it ice. Oh wait, keep it there. <laughs> then you could place a torch next to it to start off with. And it's gone back to water again. Okay. We'll change the time of day as well. Just so you guys can see a bit better. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can place it here. It doesn't do anything, obviously. But when you want to remove it it's going to update the water and ruin everything you've just set up. So you can either go about doing this by having the torches at intermittent levels. So you could place a torch here, but not here, and then the one up next after that. Or you could just do a block back, because they will still melt it, even if it's got an air block in between. So the brightness is still 
plenty sufficient there. But I think that's everything I need to mention for this tutorial, guys. See, it's updated there. Ruined everything. It's a mess. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. Leave a comment or anything in the comment section if you have any suggestions on how I could improve this, any other designs I could do, and any other applications. Just let me know, and I'll be sure to respond to you. But yeah, again, thanks for watching, and I'll see all of you later.